welcome to Ask Ralph and Lonnie. I'm Ralph Demetrius, and today I'm doing the episode myself because we are looking at the Chinese New Year forecast for 2019. And this is something I typically do my, by myself each year, you know, as I put a lot of research into it. And we also do a forecast for our show Planetary Calendar, which is very much astrological in nature. But this one for Ask Ralph and Lonnie, it focuses more on well-being. In other words, what are the things that we should focus on depending upon where we live? Because it's not universal. You know, depending upon where we live in the country, um, whose stars are shining overhead, you might say, there's different areas that become important to us. Now, the way we actually know this is that we look at the chart for the Chinese New Year. And the Chinese New Year this year is going to be uh, February 4th, 2019, at, in California, 1.04 p.m. It's the new moon in Aquarius. It's going to be at 15 degrees Aquarius. It's going to have Mercury conjunctant. Mercury becomes a big player in the chart this year. And 2019 is going to be one of those years that you say, remember 2019? People are going to remember 2019, especially in the United States, because all the planets are within about 130 degrees of each other in the sky. And they start just off the east coast of the United States, with actually um, a little to the south right over Venezuela, Mars and Uranus. It's going to be a very difficult year for Venezuela. And then it goes in an arc, heading towards the south and to the west, ending up with Jupiter just off the, the eastern coast of Australia. So it's a pretty sharp curve right there of energy that's right overhead. And when you have planets overhead like that, things happen out there in the open. Now, that's you know, okay, but this year is exceptional. And the reason is, is that four of the major planets are in their most extrovert signs. See, planets have both introvert and extrovert signs. The extrovert signs are called the rulerships and exaltations. The introvert signs are called the detriments and falls. And each planet has six signs. Each of the traditional planets after Saturn have six signs that they relate to. And usually at any given time, one or another planet will be an exaltation or detriment or fall or rulership. You know, that someone's got some type of dignity. That's what they're called, the dignities. But there's not usually a lot of them. But what it will tell you is that who's the leader on that side? Like if there's one planet in an extrovert position, they become the leader. Now, when you have a couple of planets there, it's a little bit like having two really great athletes on the field at the same time, like in a soccer match. You know, it becomes a competition between them. And they both get better because they're basically either playing against or alongside of someone who's also very, very good. And that's what happens when both planets are have a similar dignity. Well, this year, we have four of the traditional planets, which means going out to Saturn, you know, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, that are in these dignities. And when they're like that, it's like having four great players on the field at the same time, and three of them want to lead. The fourth one just wants to play well with the other ones, but three of them want to lead. Most interestingly, the Chinese New Year and the concept of the Chinese years is based upon the position of Jupiter and Saturn, how they connect together. And Jupiter this year is in Sagittarius, a big, you know, expansive sign. Saturn is in Capricorn, a compressive, practical sign. The Chinese call this year the year of the pig. The pig is considered a very lucky animal. It's called the year of the earth pig, which is a very practical year, where that's Jupiter in lucky Sagittarius and Saturn in practical Capricorn. Now, in the United States, we don't have that much of an influence of Jupiter. Jupiter is actually all the way as far west 
um, as, like I said, the coast of Australia. Saturn, though, there's actually a Saturn-Pluto conjunction that's running right over uh, Hawaii, the Hawaiian Islands. So this year in the Chinese New Year, you know, as we go through 2019, would be a very good year to focus on your structures, uh, your physical structures and also your physiological structures. In other words, uh, your joints, your bones, your integumentary system. It would be a great year to, to supplement with minerals. Uh, a very good year to use uh, herbal formulas that are very good for the, um, the joints. Things like the, the herb yucca, which is a great anti-inflammatory. Uh, things like uh, hydrangea, which is very good for removing acids from the, you know, acids from the system. Um, using herbs that are high in, in mineral compounds as well. But doing that on a consistent basis uh, for women and also for men, make sure that you're getting uh, natural hormones. You know, uh, the natural hormone for most women and that works best for them is comes from the wild yam plant, wild yam creams, because it feeds the hormonal system. Well, the hormones are very tied into bone building. Men, it's the same thing. Uh, with men, uh, herbs like sarsaparilla, for instance, are very good at supplementing the men's natural hormones as a way to help make sure that your bones are building, that your integumentary system is building, the things that, all those tendons and such that tie things together. But in, it, you know, it probably has a bit to do with the fact that there was so much volcanic activity going on there for a number of years, and now it seems like it's really calmed down. Well, that calming down, that would be Saturn. Saturn compresses. Saturn constricts. Saturn says, hey, chill, chill, calm, calm, calm. Jupiter says, go big. So, you want to do the same thing. You want to reinforce your buildings. You want to make sure that your structures are good. Uh, Saturn Capricorn is uh, about wood. It likes it likes clean lines. It doesn't like fuzzy. Okay, this is not a fuzzy position. So it might be a very good year, for instance, um, to really look at the trees on your property. You know, if you've had trees die on your property, make sure that you're removing those. You know, because fire is always an issue, but also trees fall down and land on people. So you have to be responsible to, to that. So that's the Saturn com component. Now, the other two planets I mentioned that are in very strong positions are um, Mercury and then Mars. Now, Mercury is in Aquarius. It's very close to the sun. And this is very much about the media and where we're really seeing that is along the west coast of the United States. Because it's Mercury in Aquarius, it's very electrified. At this point, people are so overwhelmed with their electronic devices. Their nervous systems are so overwhelmed with this onslaught of electricity and electromagnetic fields that make their body consume nutrients that they're just in distraction mode all the time. Trying to get anyone to respond to you anymore is a challenge. You know, you got to send them an email, place a phone call saying, I'm sending you an email, and then send them a text, and maybe they're going to respond, right? Maybe they're going to, and why? Because they're just having this onslaught of information coming at them all the time, and people don't realize that there's both the emails, the phone calls, and the texts, but there's the onslaught of media from the television and from the media, and also just the electromagnetic fields themselves. It's like standing in a wind of this all the time, and it's just being beaten on all the time. I remember many years ago, I worked in factories, and the noise levels were extremely high. And the only way you could communicate with people was to shout. So you felt like everyone was mad all the time because they were always shouting. They weren't mad, that's just the only way you could communicate was by shouting to each other. But being just in the onslaught of that noise and the heat all the time just wore you down. The electromagnetic fields from our electronics are a more subtle version of that. And then they wear you down. This is a great year to focus on your, you might say, environmental health. Um, Supplement with minerals that, you know, that help you with that. Things like magnesium, for instance. Most people use up huge amounts of magnesium dealing with these electromagnetic fields. Um, there are black walnut, for instance, is extremely good for helping your body get rid of um, uh, electromagnetic traces left in the body. Uh, get Help getting rid of radiation in the body. 
you know, this has been a big issue ever since, you know, the, the radioactive disaster in Japan. You know, we've been getting affected by that here on, on the, the west coast of the United States. So things like black walnut, if you can find very high quality kelp, kelp also has a component that pulls um, radioactive energy out of your body because of the high iodine. Uh, if you find that your energy level is going low, check to see, you know, get, go online and get the symptoms for what does a low thyroid sound like. Well, if the body isn't getting enough iodine or the body is getting, is, is getting hit by too much electromagnetic fields, it will slow down your thyroid. Everything else slows down too. You know, slow thyroid really affects everything across the board. So you may want to supplement with something that's high in a hot a form of kelp. You can supplement directly with iodine, a little bit of iodine. It can do wonders for a person. So this is going to be a big issue on the West Coast especially, partly partially because we're probably getting more influence of, um, of from pollutants, radioactive pollutants, than we may realize. I've kind of been skeptical about it, but looking at this chart, I kind of wonder. Okay, um, In the middle of the country, we have Neptune overhead, and Chiron runs up over the middle of the country. Neptune, you know, you don't tend to really notice Neptune... Um, physiologically so much, partially because you can't see Neptune without a telescope, and that which you can't see doesn't really affect you in that way. It affects you, but kind of affects us more communally. Uh, Chiron's the same way. Chiron's up over the, the middle of the country. Though it does say a lot about um, a lot of spiritual healing in the middle of the country. Um, if I lived in, oh, one thing I should say about Neptune, which has to do with imagination and illusion, does go right through Colorado and Denver, which of course has become the, the mecca for, you know, cannabis production. So, and Neptune is a very uh, good money planet, very powerful money planet. So uh, as our laws change, I would expect that um, Colorado, place as it is right there, you know, easy shipping from both directions, can really become a pretty significant um Location for investment, you know, I'd say for things that relate to illusion and relaxation, but also Neptune has a lot to do with um, with uh, compassion and health, the lymphatic system, and of course with you know our, our the farm bill that just passed removes cannabis or actually hemp, which is the lower THC version of cannabis, which is used for medicinals, remove that from the controlled substance list. So now we're going to see a major growth in terms of um, hemp uh, farming in the United States. Hemp, you know, remember during the Second World War, hemp was very widely planted in the United States. It had been outlawed uh, in the 30s when prohibition ended. They needed to go after something else, so they outlawed hemp. But during the Second World War, they couldn't get manila rope couldn't get rope from Manila. Well, hemp makes even a better rope than the, than the Manila rope. So they started getting farmers to grow hemp. So for years and years afterwards, you would find along the sides fields uh, hemp growing because it was just the leftover seeds. It was very you know very low THC, like two or three percent, you know. But it was still illegal. I actually knew someone who was arrested once for um, having hemp in his car when he had gone out and harvested it with this. It's not like you could do anything with it except maybe make a nice rug. That you can supposedly make nice uh, construction materials out of it by mixing it with lime. Interesting, but it's going to really be a big growth. So maybe that's what that Neptune is really talking about. Now, on the East Coast, on all the East Coast is Mars and Uranus. Uh, one thing, it really goes up over the Caribbean, so one thing I would really watch out for would be uh, a very, very active uh, hurricane season. Um, if I lived any place near the coast, I would some, spend some serious time uh, making sure that you know my my home was fortified against that, uh, that I had emergency supplies. But also, it's Mars and Uranus, and Mars has to do with physical energy. This is a really good year to find ways physically to deal with your anger, you know, through athletic technology. It could be a great year for like products like Peloton, you know, in other words, exercise programs where you're connected by the internet 
to other people because it's Uranus. Uranus has a lot to do, it seems like it has a lot to do with the development of the internet um, and the way that it networks uh, technology. Once again, it's one of these communal, it's a communal energy. But having uh, Mars and um, Uranus together there, like I said, would could be a really great year for more of the, more of these types of communities developing. Now, the one problem that we do have with um, companies are realizing that letting people work from home is much more productive than having them all come into the office sometimes. I mean, there's some, there's some times when people need to be together, but for a lot of the work that has developed in recent years, which is very different from the kind of work that people worked at years ago, having them work from home is very efficient. The only problem with that is they lose that social interaction that's so important for our well-being, you know, for our happiness. So these types of exercise communities really become important, you know, because it's one thing to, you know, email people back and forth, but when you're competing with people, it's like, you know, having that, like I said, you know, having great two great players on the field at the same time. When you're competing in a group and having to stay up in a group on a physical activity where you're getting into your hormones and your blood and your lymph and getting these physiological things moving forward, you really have a potential to make much more of a connection and do much more for yourself than you could just, you know, sending them a text because you're tying into the kinesiological responses that our body, you know, relies on for survival. So that's one thing we could really see that developing a lot on the west, on the east coast. So a great year, very, very important. Um, this one might be interesting too. You know, there's uh, the Uranus conjunct Mars, and this is more global. There's been a bunch going on recently where they're starting to develop alternative forms of protein, you know, actually kind of growing steaks. And this has been going on for a while now. Um, where there's been a, for years, people saying, oh, we should move over to a vegetable based diet. That would be great if our body wasn't designed the way it was. And I have no great prejudice against vegeta vegetarianism or, or vegans, uh, but I've been uh, in professional herbology for over 45 years at this point, and I've seen people using all different kinds of diets, and I do know that the human body requires certain amino acids that are not found in vegetables. They're not found in any large, large amount in, in plant-based material, that they are found primarily in um, muscle tissue or organ tissue from animals. It just has to do with the fact that we have, as humans, used the same diet for 99% of our, 99 plus percent of our existence here on earth. And it's only since the agricultural revolution, which is part of that 1% of the time, that people have incorporated much more, uh, many more grains into the diet and beans than ever before. And a lot of the problems that we're suffering from right now is the fact that people way over consume uh, grains and beans and dairy way over consume it, way beyond what the body can tolerate. The body has a certain omnivorous quality and that it can, it can, you know, it can adapt to a lot of different kinds of foods and make things work. But that's not their best foods. And for the, like the O blood type, which is a dominant blood type and it's called the original blood type, they really depend upon high quality uh, animal protein. And it's very rare that we work with a client who's a vegetarian or a vegan, who's an O blood type, where they're not having some real problems, either in terms of you know low energy or hormonal issues or muscular issues or strength or because they're lacking, especially the L-carnitine and other components that are found in, in meats. It's a real quandary because that type of diet worked well when there were 3 million people on the planet. You know, even 100 million. 
Does it work when you have five to six billion on the planet? How many animals do you have to grow? This is why most of these people, and actually the mute growth of, peop of the populations have happened since the, the farming of grains. When grains started being farmed, populations expanded. They exploded. Why? Because you could feed people. Now, what's funny is that the people themselves got smaller. The original, during the, the Paleolithic period, people were much taller and stronger and slimmer and stronger. You know, the typical Paleolithic person was like a world-class athlete. As they started feeding people more grains, you could make lots and lots more people, and people would have more children because they could feed them. And people will, if, they, if you can't feed children, you know, societies don't have them. You know, people, you know, people think we're not animals, not that animals don't think too, but we're not entirely tied to our hormones. We have a lot of pretty strong link, but we're not entirely tied. People will make decisions upon bearing children based upon how much food is available. And during economic slowdowns, birth rates go down. Economic rise, birth rates go up. People realize, oh, this is, we can feed these children. When you have lots and lots of grains, lots and lots of beans, right? They feed lots of people and they have lots more children. The problem is that people have actually shrunk and they've gotten sicker because their bodies were not designed for that. Uranus and Mars conjunct. Uranus' technology is innovation. Mars is protein. Mars and Aries is really protein. Are we going to see some dramatic improvements in the synthetically produced, our plant-based, you could call it synthetically produced, um, foods. You know, in other words, for a long time, the big challenge was that we weren't really sure how protein was made. We knew that there were these amino acids that are the building blocks of protein, and the body would you know, use the hydrochloric acid in the, in the belly to break these things down into amino acids and right over the, get rid of the program from the, 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 the animal. And then our body would take these amino acids and put them into a black box and out the other side would come a protein. And that's what they would call it, a black box. When in science doesn't understand how it works, they call it a black box. Well, in recent years, probably in part, partly due to research and fermentation science and such and, you know, just the advances of that come from with having the tremendous microscopes and um, technology we have, they've started figuring this out. And so why can't we manufacture a high-quality animal-like protein that the body will like, that will help people be healthy? And we may see some real advances. Now, realize that Uranus is a little bit like the Joker, and so sometimes wacky things happen. But guess what? That's why Uranus is around. And, you know, Mars just is supercharging it a bit. Mars is not typically wacky, but he does supercharge things. So that could be another way it could be going on. But like I said, in terms of health, this would be a very good time to um, do physical activities, um, sports, uh, as part of a group on the East Coast. Uh, especially if you're finding that you're having issues with anger um, and circulation. Um, like I said, West Coast really is about making sure that you're, you're dealing well with the, um, the issues of uh, electromagnetics. The other thing to really be aware of on the West Coast, but everyone pretty much knows this, is you need to start. It's, this is an Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign. Mercury is insects. One of the things we actually saw after the, the fires in uh, Napa was that the following year, there were very few insects. And the reason was the areas, so much area burned and it killed the insects. You know, we just had, we didn't have very many. You didn't have them coming down from the hills and such. And most of the fires were up in hills, you know, from where we live. You would, going up the valley, you'd have no idea that there was a fire unless you knew where to look because most of these fires take place way up in the hills. That's why they're so hard to fight. But um, the issue of the air, the quality of the air, it be, is very important for people on the West Coast to work actively on the health of your lungs, your respiratory health. These things are affecting people. They don't realize how much they're affecting them. 
okay? What's good for the lungs? Fenugreek is a tremendously good herb for the lungs. Horseradish. Horseradish is found in mustard, but you can also use horseradish in other kinds of foods as well. You can also take it as a supplement mixed with other things. Horseradish helps the lungs to excrete. And when they excrete, they clean out at the same time. Ginger is very similar in that way. Um, bone set is another one. There's a well-known herb for that. But there's a lot of different herbs. But find the ones you like. Do the research. Try them. Try them in small amounts initially. Never start an herb with a large amount. Start with a very small amount. Sometimes you get the capsule. Open the capsule up and take a taste. Go find uh, a nice tea. We have, you know, California, especially the North Bay, has some wonderful um, herbal companies. Find, you know, a tea that's for the lungs that normally might be used for... um, a cold, something like it was with slippery elm and that would be used for comforting the lungs during cold and make it part of your daily diet because these are nutritional herbs. Not only do they calm things down, they heal and make it part of your daily diet because Californians really need to work on this. We need to work on making our lungs stronger because these fires, until we you know change our forestry programs and start being able to clean out a lot of the dead trees and before, until we can get people to stop building up on the hills or, you know, fortify our electric lines, do the things that we need to as good stewards of the earth to calm down these fires, to to limit them, even then we need to strengthen our lungs. You know, California is filled with pollen and molds and fungus and, you know, off the grapevines and the plants. It's such a fertile place. Lung health is very, very important. And with that mercury conjunct the sun and the moon in Aquarius, an air sign on the West Coast at the Chinese New Year, that's a real issue. So we really need to work on that as a community. And it's an Aquarius, the sign of community. So that's my suggestions for the year of the Earth Pig. Health suggestions, this goes on all year. That goes on from Chinese New Year to Chinese New Year because this is the seed time. It sets the, the tone for the entire year ahead. I hope you find these things helpful. Come back and see us again. You can also visit Planetary Calendar for the more detailed forecast or visit spaceandtime.com for our monthly forecast. And you can watch our new astrology show called Astrologers Chatting Over Coffee. We hope you found this illuminating and we wish you wonderful good health and good luck in the year of the earth pig. Thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm.